Shortly before 2022 expired, Governor Kathy Hochul signed legislation that paves the way for New Yorkers to have their earthly remains committed to biological decomposition, which is billed as an environmentally sustainable alternative to burials and cremations. To discuss the implementation of this measure, which will be left up to cemetery corporations, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by David Fleming, Legislative Director for the New York State Association of Cemeteries. Welcome back to the show, Dave, and thanks for joining us in the Capitol. So great to be here in person. Thank you. So what are the options uh, currently for a corpse in New York? <laughs> so you could go with traditional burial uh, or cremation. And then what we are lo- looking at now with natural organic reduction, some call cemetery light. It's essentially what happens in a cemetery just in a shorter period of time. It is a more environmentally uh, sustainable form of disposition, according to folks who are deeply interested in advocating for this, this sixth state in the union that will now allow this. You know, we currently have just traditional burial and cremation Uh, for the next few months until regulations are implemented and this goes into effect. Uh, Folks should understand that I think that the actual implementation, given the investment in the types of facilities for natural organic reduction, could probably take a year or more. So, yeah, here in the Capitol amongst the press, I think we just refer to this as the human composting bill, but it's obviously more complicated uh, than that. So what is actually going to go into this process that's envisioned with uh, the natural organic reduction legislation? So it actually requires an entirely different facility than you would have at a cemetery. So just to back up, Mm -hmm. cemeteries in New York are all nonprofit regulated entities. So they're all required to be these quasi-government agencies that perform an an important public um, service, which is disposition of human remains and the respectful disposition of human remains. So uh, cemeteries have, uh, you know, don't have a lot of money. And, uh, you know, they're very strategic about the types of operations they have. Some have crematories, some do not. Um, And this would be another option. So they would invest in a facility that would um, hold these containers that are individual uh, vessels for individual bodies. And they would go through this uh, breakdown of the human remains that's accelerated as opposed to being in the ground. And then those remains could be uh, deposited into a cemetery. So essentially, it sounds like someone's body is going through this process, and then afterwards, someone goes back into that container and does something with the remains? It's really, um, the statute as it was passed is uh, really mirrors the cremation statute, mm-hmm. because the process is generally uh, the same, except they're not utilizing heat and flame. You're putting a body in a container, um, depending on the type of system, Uh, that you'll see in other parts of the state. It involves wood chips and alfalfa, Mm. that sort of thing, natural uh, organic products. Um, The body would be put in untreated uh, and would be in this vessel um, under a constant temperature. Uh, So it's a natural organic process. Uh, The facility itself is heated and, you know, so that the process stays at the same uh, temperature. And the body breaks down and uh, breaks down in a very short period of time. Yeah, what, what are we talking about in terms of length here for breaking down? Are we talking months or years? Or? So depending on the process, you could talk 30 to 60 days. Okay, wow. And then, um, not to disturb listeners, but it's really the same part as uh, cremation, in that if you open the container mm-hmm. at the end and there might be some pieces of uh, bone fragment, those are put in uh, a pulverizing machine, which reduces them. They're then re-put back in with the soil. Uh, which is what the remains are basically reduced to. And that goes on for a a number of weeks as well so that there's complete breakdown of the body. Is there restrictions envisioned in this legislation in where the remains can be used, where this human compost, uh, for lack of a better word, can can be utilized? Say, if I want to put grandma in my vegetable garden because she always loved gardening or grandpa was a big fan of the scene in... Uh, Godfather, when the the Michael Don Corleone bites the big one, uh, can I can I put somebody in the garden like that, or are there more restrictions in terms of where the remains go? Well, the way in which the bill is drafted, um, and I think that some of the people who have opposed the legislation in years past um, haven't actually read the bill and seen that. That doesn't stop people here, no, Dave, from opposing <laughs> things. Particularly in Albany, I, it would never stop anyone. Um, and uh, certainly some of our opponents, based on some of the memos they put out, mm-hmm. uh, clearly had never read the bill. Um, this is very different th- from the other five states that have passed mm-hmm. it. It is a very um, public policy, pu- a consumer 
choice consumer protection related piece of legislation, which we're very good here at here in New York. There's never a regulation that we didn't like. And it's highly regulated and creates a process where it is focused towards cemeteries and memorialization. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly families can take a portion of the remains with them okay. to... to what, just like they would with cremation. Yeah, same way you scatter in ashes. Absolutely. Just like you would do with cremation. And But the difference here is that there's a significant amount of material created from the um, reduction of a human body. Like enough to fill a wheelbarrow? Uh, a little more than a wheelbarrow. Okay. So and I don't even have a wheelbarrow. <laughs> so, you know, having a container at home is not really uh, what you'd be looking to do. So uh, it does provide families with benefits, particularly in cemetery, older cemeteries. If a family, a family wanted to put the remains in their family lot, you mm -hmm. can uh, remove some of the topsoil and put this new uh, soil down, and it's a way in which uh, families can uh, utilize the lots that they already have, as well as take some, um, if they wanted to, um, take a portion of the remains with them to do something else, just like they would with cremation, they would be permitted to do so. But there are regulations we're expecting to be coming out, um, again, to further uh, deal with how families can uh, dispose of the remains. Do you have any sense of what percentage of New Yorkers are going to gravitate toward this option? For example, are cemeteries going to build up their capacity to take on New Yorkers who are interested in this? Or are they going to wait and see if people are asking about this, this new uh, human composting option? Well, I think you're going to see some of the more well-funded cemeteries who have the resources to do this, mm -hmm. to do it soon, um, as soon as they really can, because uh, we're, we've seen the interest in other states. And unlike a lot of bills that get passed in New York, this is actually a grassroots bill. It started with community organizations and individuals who are really interested in bringing this type of process to New York and providing more options to consumers in New York. Um, and we've worked with them over the last several years to... Uh, the bill, as it originally was introduced, does, that's not what was passed. I mean, it it's certainly uh, reflects the consumer protections that we have in New York, and I think it's actually a better bill and a better law than we've seen in the other five states that have implemented it. You and I have talked in the past about the fiscal challenges facing these nonprofit organizations that run these uh, really vital and critical part of afterlife care. How big of a deal could this be to their bottom line? Is this something where just the rich get richer and they'll be able to take advantage uh, of this? Or do you see this as a realistic way for smaller cemeteries or ones that are struggling to preserve their operations in the long run? Yeah, I think it actually is a way that we're going to be looking at providing revenue streams to cemeteries across the financial spectrum. Again, they're all nonprofits, mm -hmm. so they, ne they need the money to continue to operate. And there will be pockets of the state where this will be um, a really sought-out option for consumers, and there will be parts of the state where it will not be. And I think that you, you will probably see as well cemeteries working together. Um, so cemeteries perhaps mm -hmm. that are in urban areas – uh, that don't have the room to do this may work with other cemeteries uh, that are in more rural areas that would have the room to build these facilities on their property. Um, and, you know, both cemeteries in that case would benefit. And so I think there is the real potential of that. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if one of the first ones was in Ithaca, uh, but <laughs> I can imagine uh, that just from the public response from the Hudson Valley in New York City, there's certainly a lot of interest down there in providing these additional options. And there are many other options, I think, that are possible in New York in the coming years that people have had a lot of interest in uh, that may come here as a result of uh, this very long legislative fight. Well, we've been speaking with David Fleming. He's the legislative director for the New York State Association of Cemeteries. David, thank you so much for making the time. Really appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Support for Capital Press Room provided by the William G. Pomeroy Foundation. Communities across the Empire State have stories to tell. A roadside marker funded by the William G. Pomeroy Foundation can help your town or city educate the public, encourage pride of place, and promote local tourism. More about the Pomeroy Foundation's New York State Historic Marker Grant Program for 501c3 organizations, nonprofit academic institutions, and local state and federal government entities at wgpfoundation.org.